Her talking to Sergei Prokopiev. He is the Soyuz commander. He will be in the uh, center seat of the Soyuz descent module. It's a three-section spacecraft. The uh, uppermost section that you see at the top of your screen is the instrumentation and propulsion module uh, where the engines and thrusters are located. Uh, the center section uh, where the crew is strapped in is the uh, descent module. And the upper section is the orbital module. Those three sections will separate pyrotechnically uh, before the uh, descent module enters the Earth's atmosphere with its heat shield pointed in the direction of travel. In uh, Kazakhstan, the uh, NASA team, which is embedded uh, with the Russian uh, Search and Recovery Forces comprising Rosaviatsa, that's the civil uh, search and recovery uh, agency that is responsible for uh, the landing operations uh, for Soyuz crews returning from the International Space Station. Uh, that uh, team of NASA and Russian landing personnel are about uh, to board uh, helicopters uh, to fly two hours from the staging city in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, uh, to an intermediary staging site in uh, the town of Jezkazgan. The helicopters uh, that will be deployed by the Search and Recovery Forces uh, will be flying to the intermediary uh, landing site in uh, Jezkazgan to refuel before they take off around the time of the deorbit burn. We'll talk about the sequence of events uh, leading up to the landing itself here in a moment. Uh, those helicopters uh, will refuel in Jezkazgan and then fly about uh, 35 minutes over a 90-mile stretch from Jezkazgan to the landing site uh, to uh, begin uh, the process of extracting the crew from the Soyuz descent module and placing them in a nearby inflatable medical tent where they'll get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable flight clothing, uh, receive uh, medical exams, and then uh, be placed in three different uh, helicopters for a, the two-hour flight back to Karaganda, where they will uh, split up with Rubio boarding a NASA Gulfstream jet to fly back to Houston, and Prokopiev and Patelin boarding a um, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft uh, to fly back uh, to their homes in Star City, their training base at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. Moscow Station, Sergei, uh, did you have a look? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, everything is uh, good. Uh, we could see everything. Uh, we will pass on this information. Moscow Station on Space to Ground 1. Oleg, there are LOSs from time to time. Now we are receiving a good video. Thank you for that. So uh, I, you got it. I, I hope that I am not taking any pictures. Yes, we understand. And now this view inside yeah, the uh, we'll Prashal module of the uh, International Space Station. Uh, you're looking. Uh, at uh, Russian cosmonaut, I believe that's Konstantin Borisov, who uh, is along with uh, Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub, who will be uh, part of Expedition 70 at the time of undocking that is scheduled uh, just over three and a half hours from now. There's a view of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft as uh, the International Space Station flies 250 five statute miles over the South Atlantic, or rather the, the South Indian Ocean, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Again, uh, the Soyuz is scheduled to undock at 2.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Central Time, 3.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, 
once uh, the hatch to both uh, the station and the Soyuz spacecraft is closed, the uh, Soyuz crew on their side of the docking interface and the International Space Station crew on their side of the docking interface at Prashal, they'll conduct a series of leak checks before that vestibule, the small passageway between the Soyuz and uh, the International Space Station is depressurized to vacuum. Uh, that uh, will set the stage for hooks to be open and uh, springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another for physical separation of the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft. There will be two separation burns from Soyuz's thrusters to uh, initiate an opening rate away from the space station, placing it later into a safe distance away from the complex for the deorbit burn that is scheduled just after 5.24 a.m. Central Time, 6.24 a.m. Eastern Time. That will be a four minute, 39 second retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit to begin its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. Some 27 minutes after the deorbit burn, uh, the pyros uh, will initiate a separation of the three sections of the Soyuz. Uh, the orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module will separate from the descent module, which is where the crew will be seated. The uh, direction of travel uh, will place the heat shield of the Soyuz into the direction of travel to ablate or repel the heat that will build up around the Soyuz as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. That heat uh, builds up to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit uh, before uh, leaving uh, the harshest uh, regime of the entry portion of uh, the descent back to Earth. Some 15 minutes uh, before touchdown, the command will be issued to open up the parachutes on uh, the Soyuz spacecraft at an altitude of about 6.7 miles, or 10.8 kilometers, and about uh, 14 and a half to 15 minutes later, touchdown will occur. The soft landing thrusters on the Soyuz will fire about a second or two before touchdown, and Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin will be back on Earth for the first time in 371 days. Just a few minutes from now, uh, we'll be back inside uh, the Prashal module to watch uh, Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin uh, say farewell to their crewmates aboard the International Space Station before they float into the Soyuz and close the hatch that will uh, begin uh, the critical phase of uh, the pre-undocking preparations uh, that will take place over the course of the next several hours. Once uh, they close the hatch to the Soyuz and uh, the hatch is closed on the station side of the docking interface, the crew will begin to don their Sokol launch and entry suits and uh, will uh, make their way into the uh, descent module to strap themselves into their respective seats in uh, the Soyuz. Uh, this is the configuration that they'll be in if you look uh, head on to where the crew will be seated. Prokopiev, as the Soyuz commander, will be in the center seat, flanked to his left by Dmitry Patelin, who will be board engineer number one, and to his right by Frank Rubio, who is board engineer number two. As mentioned earlier, the uh, operation tonight and through the course of the overnight hours is uh, being conducted 
uh, primarily by the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow in the town of Koryov. You see this view from a balcony camera overlooking their International Space Station flight control room. Uh, they uh, will be talking directly to the Soyuz crew throughout the course of uh, the undocking, the orbit burn, and the entry phase. Once uh, the Soyuz uh, begins to approach the landing site in Kazakhstan, uh, voice uh, and uh, data will be relayed through an Antonov uh, fixed-wing aircraft that will be flying in the vicinity of the landing site, operating as a relay station uh, to provide uh, data and voice capability back to those flight controllers you see in Korolev. The uh, Rosaviatsa Search and Recovery Forces uh, will be circling uh, the landing zone in uh, their respective Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, with the NASA personnel on board. And uh, once the Soyuz touches down, uh, they will land in sequential fashion uh, near, near the uh, spacecraft itself to begin the process of extracting the crew who will be placed in uh, those reclining chairs that you're familiar with that will be placed just uh, alongside the capsule to enable uh, the crew to have uh, several minutes of an opportunity to uh, get their equilibrium. Uh, this will be the first time in over a year that they'll be experiencing uh, Earth's gravity, so it's going to take some time uh, for their equilibrium uh, to return to normal, but uh, they'll be going, they'll be undergoing uh, rehabilitation once they return uh, respectively to Houston and to Star City to facilitate uh, their uh, return uh, back uh, to uh, their pre-flight conditioning. Once uh, they have had an opportunity in those reclining chairs to uh, to get uh, their equilibrium back a bit. Uh, those uh, crew members will be hoisted in the chairs and brought into a nearby inflatable medical tent to get out of those Sokol launch and entry suits and into uh, their flight clothing uh, to return to the helicopters after medical exams are conducted for the two-hour flight back to Karaganda uh, to split up for the first time in over a year and to return to their uh, respective homes in Houston and into Star City. A good view of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft docked to the Prashal module, which is the node module, a multi-hatched uh, docking port for multiple vehicles uh, at the Russian segment of the station. And now we're back inside uh, Prashal at the hatchway to the Soyuz. As the crew uh, is beginning to gather for final farewells before the Soyuz crew floats uh, through the hatch, and closes the hatch behind them to begin their pre-undocking preparations. The cap is ready. We'll use it before hatch closure. Thank you. 
Oleg Kononenko in the uh, foreground, now in his fifth flight into space. When he returns uh, a year from now, along with Nikolai Chub, Kononenko will have accrued more than a thousand days in space. He'll be at the top of the list for the most uh, days in space by a human. The International Space Station uh, currently flying over the Indian Ocean, about uh, to cross into Southeast Asia, flying over Jakarta, Indonesia. And a view of Frank Rubio, soon to depart the International Space Station. Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin originally were uh, scheduled to spend just six months on the, on the station, but a uh, coolant leak developed in their original Soyuz that brought them to the station, the Soyuz MS-22, back uh, on December 14th last year. And uh, a replacement Soyuz was launched unpiloted and automatically docked to the station. That's the Soyuz MS-23 that they'll be returning home in a short time from now. And the Soyuz commander, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin. NASA's Laurel O'Hara in the field of view. A few final uh, pictures being taken. Jasmine McBelly. Nikolai Chub now in the field of view. Once uh, this uh, farewell opportunity is uh, concluded, Rubio, Prokopiev, and Batellin will float inside the uh, Soyuz, and Kononenko will begin uh, the process of closing the hatch on the Prashal module side of the docking interface. The Soyuz hatch will be closed, and the Soyuz crew, the departing crew, uh, will begin uh, to don their Sokol launch and entry suits.
the new uh, station commander, Andy Mogensen from the European Space Agency, playing the role of a uh, photographer. Right behind uh, the crew is uh, the hatchway to the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft. Sergei Prokopiev, uh, the commander, on the left side of your screen, he will be uh, entering undocking settings and deorbit settings for some of the data that will be placed uh, in the uh, Soyuz computers. All of the uh, actions uh, by the Soyuz will be automatically triggered by those computer commands including uh, the deorbit burn and uh, the separation of the modules and ultimately the uh, deployment of the parachutes about 15 minutes before touchdown on the steppe of Kazakhstan. And not to be outdone, Konstantin Borisov now in the uh, field of view. And with the photo fest now having been completed, uh, final handshakes between the crew members. And we'll be seeing uh, Prokopia, Patelin, and Rubio enter the Soyuz vehicle momentarily. Sergei Prokopiev entering uh, the Soyuz with his crewmates.
They are entering into the upper section of the Soyuz called the orbital module, which uh, is basically uh, designed uh, to provide the crew members a bit of space we are ready to close before they move into the center section, which is the descent module of the spacecraft. You can we are ready for the uh, hatch closure. Copy, it's a go. Please confirm that you are done with this step 3.2 uh, on page uh, 25, which is uh, preparation. Russian flight controllers uh, have given uh, the crew members on board the station uh, the green light to close uh, the transfer hatch, that is the station hatch, on that side of the docking interface. The uh, Prasal module uh, is the node module that is mated uh, to the very top of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module on the Earth-facing side of uh, the Russian segment of the station. The station hatch will be closed first, followed by the Soyuz hatch, and that will initiate the start of leak checks over the course of an orbit or so uh, to make sure that we have an airtight seal between uh, the two docking interfaces before the depressurization of the passageway is uh, conducted. Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin all inside the uh, Soyuz MS-23 now. Soyuz schedule to undock uh, three hours and 15 minutes from now. Undocking scheduled at 2.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Central Time, 3.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. There will be an undocking command to begin uh, the process of opening the hooks, holding uh, the Soyuz to the Prashal module docking port. That takes about 90 seconds to complete before the springs push off on both sides of the docking interface to initiate uh, the physical separation of the vehicle. At the time of undocking, Expedition 69 will come to an end. Expedition 70 formally begins. And there goes the hatch on the Prashal module side of the docking interface. S4 and S6 are no longer eliminated. Copy. And uh, the hatch closed on the uh, Prashal module at 11.38 p.m. Central Time, 12.38 a.m. Eastern Time. So once again, uh, Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin are now inside their return craft, the Soyuz MS-23. The hatch uh, on the station side, the Prashal module hatch, has been closed. The uh, three departing crew members will be uh, closing uh, the Soyuz hatch momentarily, having uh, bid farewell to their crewmates and to their home that they have lived in for over a year, returning home this morning after 371 days in space, the third longest space flight in human spaceflight history.
The uh, Soyuz systems were activated uh, a couple of hours ago. The Soyuz on autonomous power, no longer on station power that it has uh, been on for the past 371 days. Now go to page 28 and proceed with the steps in work. And we now have confirmation that the Soyuz hatch is closed at 11.41 p.m. Central Time, 12.41 a.m. Eastern Time. So the hatches on both sides of the docking interface are now closed. Leak checks so will get underway. And uh, the crew, the departing crew, Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin, will begin to don their Sulka launch and entry suits. Uh, give me my tablet, please. Just for your awareness, Moscow, the covered valve is in electrical control. Copy covered or uh, equalization valve of the vehicle is in electrical control. Copy. Sergey, uh, do we ever go to the activate the camera? Thank you so much for your. Uh, the video stream, uh, you, you you have a go to deactivate the camera. Okay, copy, it's a go to switch off camera. Oleg, hello. This is Vladimir. Could you please uh, tell me for our awareness what kind of cable with the extender did you? Sergey, we're, oh, we you use for the cable right? so that you recommended as you go. Uh, okay. uh, uh, All right, could you please you uh, put, put it back where you... Uh, so with the uh, Soyuz crew now uh, safely aboard uh, their return vehicle, the Soyuz MS-23, which was launched uh, back in February as a replacement vehicle for the damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft, that carried Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin to the station just over a year ago. It uh, developed a coolant leak uh, back on December 14th and uh, needed to be replaced to provide a safe passage home for these three crew members. So the Soyuz MS-23 was launched in February without a crew on board, autom automatically docked uh, to the uh, Prashal module, and now today is being used as uh, the return vehicle for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin. The Soyuz MS-22, the damaged vehicle, landed uh, autonomously on the steppe of Kazakhstan in the same location as uh, this crew will be touching down several hours from now. In Kazakhstan, the uh, NASA and Russian uh, personnel comprising the landing team are airborne in Russian Mi-8 helicopters heading uh, from Karaganda, the staging city, to the interim staging city of Jezkazgan to the southwest of Karaganda, where those helicopters will be refueled at an airstrip in Jezkazgan for about a 35-minute uh, flight later this morning to the landing site itself. Those helos will take off around the time of the deorbit burn. Uh, G7 is not illuminated. 
should have missed The uh, critical phase of the landing uh, will begin with the undocking of the Soyuz from the Prashal module, as you see in this animation, at 2.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Central Time. Two separation burns will create an opening rate uh, by the Soyuz to a safe distance away from the International Space Station for the firing of uh, the engines and the deorbit burn, a four minute, 39 second retrograde firing that will slow the spacecraft down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit. At 5.51 and 58 seconds AM Central Time, pyro, uh, pyros will fire to separate the three sections of the Soyuz with the descent module, the center section, the only section that survives the heat of reentry that will build up to about 2,500 degrees around the spacecraft. 15 minutes before touchdown, the parachutes uh, will begin their deployment. First a uh, extraction chute, then a drogue chute, and then the main parachute, enabling uh, the Soyuz to descend toward uh, its landing site on the steppe of Kazakhstan. The soft landing thrusters will fire just a second or two off the ground, and then touchdown uh, will be uh, accomplished, and the three crew members will be home after more than a year in space. So all of that activity is uh, yet to come throughout the course of the morning. Again, you're looking at a view of the Soyuz MS-23 with Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin on board beginning uh, their pre-undocking preparations. They'll be donning their Soka launch and entry suits a short time from now and uh, conducting all of the other uh, activities that will uh, lead to the leak checks and uh, the final go from the Russian flight controllers in Karlyov at the Russian Mission Control Center uh, for the undocking of the Soyuz three hours, five minutes and 45 seconds from now. We'll be back 